Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I am so excited because I'm going to be making these, uh, I'm gonna be dyeing these aprons today. I got an order from uh, a friend of mine, so um, she gave me a lot of creative free range, which is amazing. And I just got them in the mail. Um, they have a lot of sizing on them. So I'm going to wash them first. Um, I think you can tell they're pretty crispy. Um, so I wanna make sure that I get all the sizing off them so that the dye can really get into the uh, fibers because they are 100% cotton. All right, so I'm gonna go wash these now. So the first one I'm gonna start with is the equilateral triangle. And I'm just gonna start by folding on the center front and then I'm going to accordion fold it into thirds on each side and I'm just going to iron it flat. Now I got these um, aprons on Amazon and I'll put the links in the description below in case you want to get them. Um, most of them were good. I had a couple that had um, a few stitches missing um, so I just had to kind of like fix them, which was a pretty easy thing to do. So I'm just folding these into an equilateral triangle, one at a time, one fold at a time, doing the accordion style so that it gets even distribution. And I'm going to just use some blocks that I have. Um, I have many different ways of using templates for Ichijimi, so these blocks are good for like really thick things because um, I don't have a clamp that's big enough for that, so I'm just going to use rubber bands and just make sure it's like really tightly bound. So next I'm going to do I'm calling it kind of like an organic stripe, but it's just, it's a really classic tie-dye look. Um, so I'm going to accordion fold into a long skinny rectangle like I did for the first one. And just tuck all the like strings in and everything. Just kind of get them in line with the rest of the fabric. And then I'm going to wrap it with string. I'm going to start in the middle and like tie in that um, waistband string so that it doesn't go everywhere. And then I'm just going to wrap it up tight, tight, tight. I'm using a pretty thick thread for this one because um, that way it doesn't break as easily. It broke there, but <laughs> I'm just going to keep going, just tie it together, keep keep wrapping. And you can use yarn, you can use string, you can use anything you have on hand. Um, just whatever, whatever you have to wrap will work. I'm just going to keep going to the other side and then all the way back down. So I've continued wrapping it up and down multiple times and I'm going to tie it off with the original knot that I did in the center so that it's done. There it is, it's done, it's ready to go. And here are all my pieces I'm going to dye today. All right, so they're all tied up and ready to dip. These ones that are canvas can be a little bit harder to get a good pattern on because it's so thick the fabric is so thick so you're like a little more limited on what kind of patterns you can do but these ones should be good hey everyone i'm about to dip these aprons and i just tied them up and i have my vat here um so i'm gonna get my gloves on and start to dip
So I'm going to get my gloves on. Um, I like to use like kind of heavy duty dishwashing gloves. And this vat has been mixed up a few days ago, I think. And I'm just going to get all of the um, flour off the top. And I added like a few extra chemicals to it to kind of punch it up. Um, just like in the same ratio that I always do, but just a few more to reactivate it. I just find that that really helps. And you can see I dipped it very fast. I'm going to check inside to see how it looks. Um, it seems like it'd be really easy to dip stuff, but it's actually a little bit um, tricky and the worst thing is like dipping something that you spent all this time tying up and then it turns out like completely blue with no white or really white with no blue. It's better if it's really white with no blue because then you can re-dip dip it. Um, so I go really quickly when I dip things because I just want to make sure that I'm getting a good distribution of dye and I don't want it to do to soak in too fast. And I always dip dry. Now you can dip with pre-soaked um, fabric, but I, I kind of like it dry because it gives you a little bit sharper edges on the resist, um, but it does soak up the dye super fast when it's dry. So that's just something that I've kind of developed. Now I'm gonna untie them, which is like the most exciting part and sorry like the background so bad and everything this is like truly my dyeing studio so it's not very fancy <laughs> and I don't really want um, it to get ruined so I, I'm you know it's just kind of like I have a drying rack that I always use for dyeing and it has dye on it and I have like cardboard on the floor and I try to always wear clothes that are I don't care if they get a little indigo on them, so black is always good. So I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to move on to the other pattern, the one that we wrapped with the thread. And just be careful when you're untying those kind, because they can easily get clipped, uh, the fabric, which is a big bummer. And you just have to kind of be patient and open them up slowly. And here it is. It turned out really cool. I love how it mirrored the pattern. It kind of looks like, like a Rorschach test. So I opened up the rest of them and I'm going to let them all dry overnight until they're totally dry. And you can see the patterns turned out really nice. Here they are, kind of laid flat. You can see the details there in the little string marks. Here's the hexagon one. This pattern always kind of looks like a flower whenever you do these equilateral triangles. And um, it's gonna fade a little bit when you wash it. Here I am I'm gonna wash them. I always do hot and I'm gonna use Synthropol which is a dyer's detergent and um, I just go through a lot of Synthropol <laughs> and I do a lot of laundry. Uh, they know me at the laundromat. And um, I wash on hot with um, probably about a fourth of a cup to three tablespoons of Synthropol. You don't need tons. And I always just watch to make sure that it's going and that the suds are starting to turn blue. And you can even do an extra rinse if that's an option for you, which is um, a really great way because then you don't have to wash it twice. Sometimes, um, you know, you can wash it twice too, but if you can do the extra rinse, that's even better. After it's done washing, I just dry it on super hot. So that's how I always do it. Here they are, they're ready to go. I always include a little card and there is a nice glamour shot of them. Thank you guys so much for watching my video and if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more dyeing tutorials and vlogmas. Thanks so much. See you guys next time.